Here are a couple of scenarios for you to consider and to give us feedback on in the various forum sites, and these two in particular have cultural implications. The first scenario considers condoms. Now, today we have uh, lots of ways in which HIV can be prevented from passing from one person to another. You cover that when you do the HIV session or the HIV course, and that's on HIV prevention. But for many people, the one and only aspect of prevention they have are condoms. So, in 1995, I was actually teaching on an HIV course at the Arabian Gulf University in Bahrain. I was going to do a condom demonstration when, um, as soon as I brought out the condom to explain to the nurses who were students there what I was going to do, one of the female students put her hand up and she said to me, David, we don't need to know about condoms. Thank you very much. I thought to myself, I'd better check out why she doesn't need to know. Is it because they're all nurses and they understand how to use condoms and how to demonstrate them to their patients? Or was there another reason? And when I asked, she simply replied, we don't need to know about using condoms because if God intends you to get HIV, you'll get it. If he doesn't, you won't. Now consider that in relation to our multicultural world in which we live in. Of course, such faith beliefs aren't just confined to one particular religion, but they can be found in many religions and different traditional cultures as well. And I use this anecdote just as an example of more beliefs which are held sometimes by patients and sometimes by members of staff. And these can go contrary to what's seen as Western um, uh, secularized uh, ideology. Yet the challenges for us as healthcare professionals is on how to work with such different beliefs, um, especially without discrimination and ultimately for the good, for the beneficence of our clients and their sexual health and their well-being. The second scenario is again to do with cultural beliefs and this time in relation to HIV misconceptions. There were stories told um, about some men in particular southern african nations who thought that if they uh, had hiv and then had sex with a virgin that the virus would pass out to them go to the virgin and leave them hiv negative in the earlier video in this unit i said that there was nothing new under the sun in fact this cultural belief isn't new either it used to happen here in the uk in Queen Victoria's time in relation to syphilis. Some men back then thought that if they had syphilis and if they had sex with a virgin, um, that the syphilis would leave them. Because of that practice of some men raping um, uh, young virgins, having condomless intercourse with them and passing the virus to them, obviously meant that rape crisis centers throughout some of those particular nations were actually inundated with young women turning up, um, being disowned by their own families and their own communities because of the situation they were now in, many pregnant and now with HIV. Now time for you to think over some of these issues and to give us feedback in the forum sites. Con consider the two scenarios I've just presented to you and ask yourselves what similar ones you may know about, especially if they involve different beliefs or different cultures that you've come across and heard about. But then get in touch with your own gut feelings and your attitudes about these scenarios. Consider your thoughts and feelings, especially in relation to your own clinical practice and how you actually work with people who come from cultures uh, different to your own. If you were caring for them, what differences would you make and how culturally competent do you feel you are? Finally, check this out in yourselves. Consider how you feel about people that you consider to be other to yourself, for whatever reason you're calling them other, and then think about young people here in the UK, maybe some who become pregnant or acquire a sexual infection without planning or wanting either of those two things to happen. How are your feelings towards them? Because it's important for us to realise that sometimes our responses can be different depending on people's 
um, starting points. Maybe that's their religious beliefs, their ethnicities, cultures, ages, abilities, all different types of differences between us. And yet, um, we often try to impose on them the idea that once they've got knowledge on how to protect themselves, that should be good enough in it.